All right, Trey, first of all, thanks for joining me. Yeah, no problem, you know. <laughs> you know, you're a busy man. The season's coming up, but you still made time. Yeah, no, you're the busy <laughs> one. I'm, I'm good. I'm enjoying it. Uh, let's talk about the rookie season that you're coming off of, um, the best in Hawks history for a first-year player. How would you describe what it's like now that you look back on it? Yeah, my, my rookie season was, was fun. Uh, it was interesting. It was um, started out not like how I wanted it to, but it definitely ended the way I wanted it to as far as how I was playing. Um, of course, I wanted to win more games as a team um, in my first year, but um, I think the growth and the way I played uh, was, was great. So hopefully I can continue that in my second year. You talked about the way that it started. And I go back to November and looking at stats, and you shot it 19% from three. So I, I know when I say that. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> what do you remember about that low, like that time that you were struggling to find your shot, your rhythm, your game? Yeah, it was, I mean, it was the first time really me playing basketball period that I've like, been really frustrated on. like something that I've, I've grown up being really good at is shooting the basketball and something that I'm really I'm basically known for is shooting the basketball so whenever that month and I shot at 19 percent like you said it's, it's crazy just to think about think about that because I, all the hard work I put in heading into the season um, the excitement of playing in my, my first NBA season uh, shooting, that, shooting that low and not playing as well as I wanted to was definitely kind of frustrating. Is there one game or particular moment that you remember sitting in and having to, to really almost adjust your mindset? Uh, I, I can't think of one game. Mm -hmm. um, I know early on uh, we had some home games that I was I was going home and talking to my dad after the games or, or talking to my mom and just like asking him like what am I doing wrong? Like I we rewatched the game when I got home after the game and. Uh, I would just, I hit myself in the head whenever I would shoot it flat when I'm, I know I needed to get air into the ball or, or the, just the little things that I knew I, I needed to correct to get back to where I was. So, um, I mean, I think early on in the season when I was going home, uh, reflecting is whenever I was, I was really thinking about it. What were your parents saying to you during that time? I mean, they just doing what parents do, trying to give me as much confidence and um, try to tell me everything's going to be all right. And as long as I stick to what was got me to this point, um, everything's going to be all right. So they were just there to, to be with me and support and uh, things like that. Okay, so flash forward to February, and you're shooting 43% yeah. from three. It's almost like there was a black and white difference between mm -hmm. Trey at the beginning of the season and the second half, Trey. What changed? Confidence. Uh, this confidence, I think, for me, um, Coming into the season, I've, I've always been high on confidence, but I think I was more of a fan of the people I was playing against instead of me realizing, like, all right, like I'm, I'm here, I'm supposed to be here. And what moment did you realize you were supposed to be in the league? Uh, I think after a couple of games, um, I started knocking down some shots, started getting back to doing what, I, what I've always done. Um, after that first month, I think, that's just when it really hit me. I just, I just had a different mindset. Um, my mindset changed. Just always being in tag mode and just, I mean, getting back to what I was doing. So, I like what you said. You were kind of like a fan of the game or a fan of the league. Yeah. Who were the first people when you saw them? You're like, oh, am I really on the court with you right now? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of guys. I mean, I grew up in Oklahoma City, so going to Thunder games or going to Hornets when Chris Paul was there. I think playing playing him or playing guys like Russ or KD when I would play those guys and it would hit me early in the game just like dang this is crazy I'm like I'm actually playing on the court the guys that I I mean I was close with growing up or uh, I watched all the time on TV um, now I'm here so after that first couple of minutes then it, then it would click and. And then I would have to just get back, so it would be crazy sometimes. Yeah, everyone talks about kind of stylistically their games are influenced by certain players. Yeah. Who do you think your game is influenced by? I try to mirror my game as much as I can from, I mean, my favorite player of all time, Steve Nash, mm -hmm. uh, with his just cerebral ability. Is, I mean, his ability to, to find open teammates, to score at all three levels. I mean, it's just intelligence of the game. So. I try to try to get as much as Steve Nash in my game as I can. I know I'm not there yet. He's a 
legend Hall of Famer, but try to do as much as I can with him. It probably helps to spend some time with him, and I know you did yeah. in the off season. What did you learn from him? Yeah, I, I was able to go go to Madrid, spend some time over there with him um, for the Champions League Classic, which was pretty cool. I got to get a lot of advice uh, talking to him over there, and then when we got back to the States. I got to get a, a workout with him um, in LA, which was which was really cool. I just asked him a lot of questions and. Um, I mean, about pick and roll coverages and uh, his ability to finish around the rim uh, over the big and things like that. So it was, it was really good and I, I learned a lot from him. Let's talk about the, the next step, I guess, in your game. Off season, you're always working on something. Yeah. What did you work on this off season? Maintaining my body and getting stronger. Uh, for me, I took a lot of pride in, in playing um, every game last year. Uh, I, wanted, I wanted to show people that I was, I was durable. I mean, coming into the league, people didn't think I was going to be able to play uh, a full season because of my size and things like that. So Let's talk about doubters. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I feel like you naturally just brought it up into the conversation. Mm -hmm. People doubted you coming into the league. Yeah. Will his game translate? Is he big enough to play in this league? How did that affect you? Like, What do you remember people saying about you coming out of the draft? Uh, I, remember, I remember a lot of things. Uh, I mean, just... Everything that I mean, people said about me coming into the draft or as soon as I announced that I was coming, just me thinking about everybody who's, who's doubted me, uh, people who don't believe in me, um, I just, it just fueled me to get better. And, uh, I'll always have that type of chip on my shoulder. Is it true that you screenshot it sometimes? Tweets from people? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I definitely, like, if there's things that I, I would see or something that would just really bug me, I would, I mean, I would, I would just screenshot it and I would just, um, whether it was a, on my phone literally or, or a mental screenshot, I would, I would always have that in my mind um, just because I knew that would be a little bit extra motivation to, to get me where I want to be. Give me some mental screenshot tweets or messages that you remember. Uh, I don't, I don't want to <laughs> want to say no names or anything like that, but it's definitely some some things I saw on TV mm -hmm. or tweets and like that. I don't, I don't want to say any names. But. You don't have to say names. What'd they say? Oh, I mean, he's too small, his major bust potential, um, little things like, I mean, he, he's not going to be able to play all 82 games, um, just just how I'll be out the league um, really quick, just little things like that, it's just, just little things, they all add up, um, they may be little, but um, it means something to me. When you get drafted to the Hawks, you're put in a situation in a city that hasn't had a ton of success. So you yeah. guys in that second half of the season completely changed the yeah. narrative. What do you feel like the end of last season promotes going into this season? I mean, I think it, it promotes a lot of excitement, uh, promotes a lot of um, uh, like a, a bright future for the Hawks. Um, I, I think with, what you saw with, with me, with John, with Kevin, um, I mean, I think it's a, a big bright spot heading into this season. and Everybody knows the guys we drafted, uh, the young guys. I think it's a lot of excitement heading into to this season with the Hawks, and hopefully it, it carries over, like, the hype that, I mean, we have built, built up heading into the season. Um, it carries over, so. You guys have five guys that are expected to be, like, key contributors all under 22. I yeah. mean, you're how old? Yeah, I'm 21, just been 21, which is crazy. <laughs> you guys are basically like the baby hawks, like you need a nest yeah, in Atlanta no, somewhere. <laughs> we, we were talking about this in the, the locker room the other day. Besides, if we didn't have Vince on our team, we'd be the youngest team in the NBA, so, uh, <laughs> which, is, which is crazy to think about. What's the locker room like with that much youth, that much energy? How would you describe it? It's, it's different. It feels like we're, we're still in college, if you think about it. We're, we're, all, we're all around the same age. We all... We all get along. We all have a lot of similarities with each other on, off the court, which is another reason why I feel like it's going to make that transition on the court even that much easier because we're, we're so much alike. Um, it's, it's all fun. Uh, it's exciting. It's, it's cool to hear some of the stories Vince has and uh, the, the thoughts that we have because we're all so much younger than Vince, so it's pretty cool. What's a good Vince story that you have? I don't know. Uh, Vince, well, Vince told us the other day, uh, we saw a highlight of him when he dunked on the, the guy when he played on USA. He jumped over the, the guy. Um, he said that he didn't even realize he, he dunked on him 
um, until after the game he saw the video and he, he thought the guy moved out the way, which is pretty crazy because whenever we all see the video, we all see him jump literally over him, so uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, he's Vince Carter, so he probably doesn't even see defenders when he's mm -hmm. going up to dunk on somebody. <laughs> just, it's crazy because he can still dunk and he can still fly, which is I mean, amazing to me. Yeah, to see a 42-year-old in your practices still yeah. dunking on people. <laughs> yeah, still dunking on people at that age. He's definitely had a lot of good treatments, good doctors in his <laughs> lifetime, so he's been good. Does he tell you what the key is to longevity in this league? Yeah, that's that's of course he does. He's I mean, that's, that's one thing he's definitely helped me uh, as far as my, my first year in the league, as far as like eating habits and um, what I can do to help, I mean, maintain my body, to, to be able to play 82 games and be able to play 20 years in this league. It's, it's, uh, he definitely helped me in, on that side too. There's gotta be times when there's like a generation gap when you guys are talking about something and Vince is like, what? Yeah, no, there, <laughs> there is sometimes, like we'll, we'll like even artists like, Rappers or anything, like we'll talk about. I mean, the new, the new artists, the Migos, mm -hmm. and, and all those, all those rappers. And then he's, I mean, I was talking about like Outkast, Big Boy, <laughs> and all those guys. It's just, it's a, it's an age difference thing. But Vince is cool. We all, we all kind of meet in the middle. Like mm -hmm. he, he's kind of hip to our, our generation too, which is really cool. So you've mentioned Outkast and Migos and basically a bunch of rappers that come from Atlanta. Yeah. Describe what it's like to be in the center of that type of culture, like the deep south rap scene and yeah. the way the Hawks have welcomed that into the arena. Yeah, it's, it's really cool because, like, I mean, we'll, we'll go to games and you don't know who's going to be there as far as artists. And they're all they're all supportive of the city, um, all the sports. And so when you have that type of culture, you have that type of people. and. Uh, that represent their city the way they do as far as artist-wise and stuff. It's pretty cool to see that. Mm -hmm. I can see you have a close relationship with one, Quavo. Yeah. What's it like learning from them? Like their craft is different, but it's still a craft. Yeah. Like, no. What do you guys learn from each other? Yeah, I mean, me and Quay talk about that um, all the time, just about how we respect each other's craft. I mean, being an artist is, is tough and what they do and how they're in the studio 24-7. and. Um, but Quavo is also a, a hooper too, so he understands the <laughs> what we do and how hard it is uh, to be where we're at. So he, he's definitely uh, one of my good friends, and uh, we definitely have respect for each other. He knows what it means to cook, basically. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah he definitely does. Take me back to a game or a moment or a play that you remember from last year, and you're like, oh, I was cooking then. Probably when we played the Bulls, we went to four overtimes. I had I think like 49 points. Um, I just I got in the rhythm, you get in a, a flow. I think whenever you, you shoot the ball, I, I think I, I shot a crazy deep shot. And I knew I was feeling it whenever, um, I thought it was way off, but it still went in. It's like, it's like shooting a, a, a ball into an ocean sometimes. So that was one of those games where I played the Bulls at home. Uh, I knew I had it going that night. <laughs> okay, range is a thing, obviously. That's your game, you've got <laughs> it. For a kid that's at home that wants to get it. Yeah. How do you, how do you get range? Uh, you go. You always gotta start in. Uh, you gotta start close, and then you just gotta gradually, gradually get out um, further and further. I think it's it's something that a lot of kids growing up they just they start shooting deep shots. Mm -hmm. That's because of you. It's yeah, people like you. I mean, <laughs> not just me, not just me, but I think when you when you start young, like you gotta start shooting in close. I'm, I'm doing with that with my little brother right now. He wants to start shooting three-pointers. He's nine years old and he's just launching it. But I think you have to start in close and gradually work your way out the stronger you get. And that, that puts better aim on, on your shot. Mm -hmm. How do you think players like you, Steph, guards who can shoot that have range have, are helping to evolve the game? Like, do you see the game changing over the time since you've been a nine-year-old kid shooting? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For, from when I was a kid watching the game, uh, watching guys like Kobe and Shaq and those guys, and it was more mid-range and um, it was guys who shoot threes, obviously, but it was more of a mid-range ISO type of game. Um, so now where guys are shooting off screen, running off screen, shooting deep threes, uh, I, I definitely see the, the change in uh, of the game. Uh, I think it's evolving in a good way. I think. The game may change 20 years from now to, to something different, but the way it is right now, I think, is, is great. You'll be pulling up from half court. 
<laughs> you may, may be, we may have a four point line here soon in the NBA, you never know. Okay, give me your personal goal for the season. Like what have you set your sights on this year? For me, all my, my individual goals are, are set behind winning. Um, I know all my, my individual goals uh, that are in my head that I want to achieve, uh, I mean, won't matter unless we win games this year. And so that's my main focus is winning games and, um, and then everything else will fall into place. Are the Hawks a playoff team? I believe the Hawks are a playoff team. <laughs> Tell me how they get there. I mean, by staying focused, it's going to take, it's going to take steps. We can't, that's the thing about us, being young, um, people know we're young. Um, but we can't use that as an excuse. We need to, to take it day by day, treat every game like a playoff game. And uh, we know we can't skip steps because we haven't done anything yet. So uh, we have that mindset going into every game, every night. Um, we'll have a chance to make the playoffs this year. A couple more things. Defense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I say that, like, what comes to your mind? How do you feel about the other side of the ball? Uh, for me, it's defense is, is something that uh, I got to continue to get better at. Um, uh, our team, we weren't very good on defense last year. Uh, and that's something that if we want to be an elite team, a playoff team, that's something that we have to, to make a big jump in this year. So um, that's something that we're taking on as a challenge and uh, we're excited about doing. And how have you worked on that in the off season? I mean, I think that's all about getting in the weight room, getting, getting stronger, getting more in condition. Uh, I think defense is more all about effort than uh, doing things in drills or whatever. It's, it's, it's more about effort and, and what you're willing to do to, to stop the other team from scoring. And you've proven with your game that you have a fearlessness about you. Where does that come from? I think the fearlessness just comes from my last name, just from everybody who's been in my family. We're all competitive, we're all fearless. And uh, it's just something in the young DNA that we have that we're just fearless. All right, Trey, I know you're competitive. Mm -hmm. We can't go to the court or anything. I want to make sure you reserve your legs and all that. Yeah. But what if we played a game of ping pong? I'm down, I'm down. I may not be the best ping pong player you've ever played against, but I'm down. I feel like you're scamming me. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> Come on. Let's do it. All right, Trey, we're going to 11. And I just want to warn you before this starts, I was rookie of the year in ping pong. Oh, well, uh, I need to let you know I was the MVP. So uh, <laughs> we got a little okay, thing trash. going on. OK, well, then MVP serves first. Let's MVP, go. All right, bet. Oh, hold on. <laughs> right, right. You didn't know. <laughs> I mean, uh -oh. all right, that's one. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll, we'll alternate. We'll okay, alternate. Okay. We'll alternate. Fair enough, fair enough. Oh, ooh, uh. you didn't see the spice coming. Uh. Oh, dang. I'm, I'm, I'm I may or may not let you score. I wanted to let you feel good and then you, before oh, I got going. Okay, I got you, I got you. <laughs> there we go, there we all go. Right, all right, come all back, right. kid, come back, kid. <laughs> <laughs> two, one. Oh, snap. 2-2? Two, two? Yeah, 2-2. Two, two. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yo. I heard your mama beat you, so. Yeah, my, my, mom, <laughs> my mom beats me, too, so. I got to get back my MVP status. Let's go, let's go. Shout out to Mama Trey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, three. Yep. Three, three. Three, two? Three, three? Three, three. We really do need someone to keep score. I know. Uh. Uh, I serve. Four, three. Four, three. You, I got you. I'm loose now. I'm loose now. We're good. Oh. Woo Stop it. You Stop it. it. Oh my gosh. I wasn't expecting oh my. you to come back. You see that little, that little behind the step Okay, back? we get it. You uh. know how to do a fist and all that. Behind the back. We got it. We got it. I had to make sure you got it. All right, let's go. Again. Come on. Oh my. <laughs> ah. Yes. Ah, dang. All right. What's the score? What is it? It's five four. <laughs> five, five four. four. Hi, right, appreciate you. over there like, God, I don't know what's happening. Appreciate you. <laughs> five four. Okay. There we go. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. Wingspan. I, and I have a wingspan. <laughs> <laughs> you got a long, you got a long. You should have got that one. 
Six four. Yep. Dang. Oh. Why keep? I, I feel like all my balls keep hitting. <laughs> you ready? Six five. Five six. Yeah. Nope. Oh snap. <laughs> yeah, I see you try to hit that one. <laughs> you try to hit that one. <laughs> Sorry, the volleyball came out for a second. Oh my Thought gosh. I had a kill. All right, what score? Seven five. <laughs> yep. Come on. Oh, oh yep. that was. Come on. Oh, oh my oh, goodness. Got him. Six seven. Yeah. I was going down to the wire. Okay. It is. Oh, seven up. I can't read. Heads up, yeah, I know up. we're not allowed to air this if I lose. <laughs> air How you part. feeling right now? Feel good. It's pressure time. So right, stars come out. Let's go. Seven up. Oh, come yeah. On. Eight, seven. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> The champ is here. Wow. Eight all. Eight up. You got to win by two? Yeah. OK. Because it's going to come down to that. Wow. <laughs> Hold that cheese serve. It's your serve, actually. <clears throat> come on. I see you trying to put spin on it. Yeah, you see that one? I had I to did. switch it up a little bit. You... <laughs> oh, yeah. Try to get too cute. Try to get I too I cute. Too... <clears throat> Nine to up. Get on you. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Nine up. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, how you feeling? Uh, do you want to serve it? Do you want to serve it or receive it? This L, which one you want? I'm going to receive. You All got right, it. Let's go. No, hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. The champ we is here. We had to default, yo. The champ wow. is here. Wow. We need a new paddle. So. This paddle needs to be banned. Put her there. Ricky of Good the year. Game. <laughs> it's all right, bud. Sorry, we'll, we got a rematch soon. Coming. <laughs> rematch coming. Rematch coming soon. Okay, after all star break, me and you again, right? <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. I'm going to get practice. <laughs> What's up? Thank you so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. Don't forget to download the ESPN app. And if you want more premium content, which you do, make sure that you subscribe to ESPN Plus. See you soon.